Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you how the aggregate stability of our soil can be determined in the soil laboratory. Before jumping into the analysis methods, I want to say something about the aggregate stability. Aggregate stability is the ability of soil aggregates to resist the destruction against the outside forces such as water erosion, wind erosion, or even the tillage. Uh, basically, it means how well the soil particles are held together and it is also regarded as one of the most important physical indicator of soil health. Good soil quality is uh, usually associated with good aggregate stability and it is generally said that more stable the soil, more productive is the soil. So why aggregate stability? Because good soil aggregation provides a wide range of pores from small to large. And we know a good pore size distribution allows for easy air and water entry into the soil, allows for good root penetration through the soil, and allows for easy air, water, microflora, and fauna to move into the soil. We can easily see the differences between the compacted soil and aggregated soil from these two figures. Looking at the compacted soil photo on the left side, the soil looks cemented with limited pore spaces. But in the right side, the aggregated soil seems to have visible pores, root channels, and also um, providing the earthworm habitat. So how can we improve the aggregate stability of our soil? Well, there are various management practices which can be implied uh, for improving the aggregate stability of our soil, such as including the cover crops into your crop rotation, avoiding tillage practices or uh, practicing reduced tillage, or avoiding the pesticides which are harmful to beneficial soil microorganisms. So all these practices uh, helps to improve the soil aggregate stability. And there might be other practices as well. Now, let's jump into our topic, the measurement methods of aggregate stability. There are um, basically four different methods for measuring the aggregate stability. One of them is Cornell Rainfall Simulator. Another one is Weight Seed Procedure. And then we have SLEX. It is fairly a unique technique. It is a smartphone aid procedure. And the last one is Soil Stability Index. But in this particular video, I am going to briefly show you the weight seed procedure uh, method for calculating the aggregate stability of our soil in the laboratory. Weight procedure. So, weight seed procedure involves the use of weight saving apparatus to determine the aggregate stability of a soil. This method is especially useful for the researchers and the soil scientists. It generally works on the principle that Unstable aggregates will break down more easily than stable aggregates when immersed into water. Step 1. So, in this step, air sieves are filled with 4 grams of air dried soil aggregates. We can see the air sieves in the right top corner of the slide. And then we have to place the sieves in the sieve holder as soon as in the picture. So all these are numbered. The sieves and the sieve holder are numbered so that we do not get confused. Now place the cans filled with the distilled water. These are the cans. 
So there are 16 such cans, 8 for the water and 8 for the chemical ones. And they can be labeled as yes to o and chemical for your convenience. But be sure to put enough distilled water into the cans so that soil in the sieves will get immersed in the water into the cans. We can also pour water into cans through the special can fill openings in the sieve holder. Now, place the sieve holder in the working position by putting the sieve holder in the second hole on the shaft. We can also see in the video later. Now, start the motor by putting the main switch into 3 minute position. You do not need to worry for the time because the motor will stop automatically after 3 minutes. After the motor stops, now raise the sieve holder out of the water and place it in the leak out position by putting the sieve holder in the first hole of the shaft. When there is no water leaking out of the sieves, take out those cans. These cans now contain the water plus some aggregate fragments passed through the sieves. Step 2 so now keep the sieves in the sieve holder as it is and put another set of cans that is chemical ones. But at this time we have to fill the cans with a dispersing solution instead of distilled water. And for this uh, you should know the pH of your soil. If the pH of the soil is less than 7, sodium hydroxide should be used and if it is greater than 7, sodium hexamethaphosphate should be used at the rate of 2 gram per liter of water. In my case, the pH of this soil was less than 7, so I simply used um, NaOS at the rate of 2 gram per liter of the water. After placing the cans, start the motor by putting the main switch into the continuous position as soon as in the picture and let the motor keep running until only sand particles are left on the sieve. But if some aggregates remain stable after 5 to 8 minutes of sieving, turn off the motor and drop them with the rubber coated rod until they are disintegrated as soon as in this figure. And continue sieving until all the materials is smaller than the screen opening or the sieve openings have gone through. Now raise the sieve holder and place it in the leak out position. When there is no water leaking out of the sieves, take out the numbered cans. Now, place both set of cans, that is the yes duo and the chemical ones, in an oven at 110 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or until the water has evaporated. So, these are the cans uh, with soil after taking out uh, from the oven. Uh, now, uh, their weights um, should be taken. Step 3 are the last step. So here the weight of the soil in each can is to remind by weighing the can plus soil and subtracting the weight of the can. But in the cans which were filled with a dispersing solution, there will be 0.2 gram of the dispersing solute along with the soil. Therefore, 0.2 grams should be subtracted from the weight of the soil to obtain the soil weight. So at last, the stable fraction can be calculated by dividing the weight of soil in the dispersing solution by the sum of weight of soil in dispersing solution plus distilled water can. Thank you.